<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 410, Gauge or Caliber. Let's discuss. The date is June 24th, 2021, and I am one of your hosts, Trevor the Frilatte. Hey, I'm Kelly Lynn, the classy one. Hi, I'm Kyle, a.k.a. Hef. Smooth Hef. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just Mo. No, you're not. You're Mo Better. <laughs> we got better Trevor. Now we got Mo Better. Yeah, it's no, no, it's Mo Better. Mo Better. Mo Better. Mo better. We got a guy around here, Mo, that is an Ipsic god. And I keep wanting him to get a shirt that says, I'm Mo and you're not. It's yet to it's happen. God? Okay. I'm probably going to have to make the shirt for him. Like I had this one made. No need to repeat yourself. I ignored you the first time. That's this week's shirt. <laughs> What's the opposite of an Ipsic god? You. Oh. Newbie. Oh. That knows nothing. <laughs> Good one. Boom. Hit the ground running. Pick it on the new guy. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I, I missed feel, you, bitches. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> oh, don't think that I'm going to, like, uh, send it all Mo and Kyle's way, Kelly. You ain't getting away that easy. No, no, no. no. That's no, probably I wouldn't, that's, I wouldn't expect anything different. It's like, hello, you're back. I love you. Stop. No one no one is really concerned about your expectations. We have a show to do and I'd like to continue. <laughs> All right. Welcome so, back. <laughs> why don't we jump into what we did this week in guns, which is brought to us by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. This week they have on sale PPU rifle line ammunition, 6.5 by 52 Carcano, you know, in case you want to relive your Kennedy assassination days. This is me up on the grassy knoll pretending shit like that. That's not weird or creepy. Of course it is. Do it anyway. 123 and 139 grain, 20 rounds, 33 bucks. Yeah. Really good at hitting moving targets from school book depositories. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it out because I thought everybody was talking about Carcanos and then they were talking about hmm, where can I get the ammo? Because it's kind of like, like, you know, duck's teeth or whatever. That, chicken teeth. That's what hen's that's teeth. Hen's teeth. Rarer than hen's <laughs> teeth. You. Hen's You'd think someone of your tenure would be familiar with old timey expressions. <laughs> I love you. I miss you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're old. So, um, 33 bucks for 20 rounds. That's not horrible. No. The thing about the Carcano is some people try to reload for it, not realizing that it's not a true. Let me let me explain this to you, Kelly. I believe the term for oh, World is called mansplain. I'm so looking forward even, to this night, by the way. Shh. Grown-ups are talking. <laughs> even though it says 6.5, it's not like a true 6.5. So if you reload for it and you just purchase a regular newly manufactured 6.5, you're going to get like the magic bullet for sure because your shit's going to keyhole. You know what I mean? Next, you know, Governor Connolly's throwing a Stetson in the air. It's it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So, Were you alive when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Not even Mo was alive when that happened. Oh. <laughs> wow, two shots already how, how long have we been on for speaking of two shots it was three one came from the grassy knoll and the other person who wasn't alive that day was kennedy <gasps> all right so Ooh. what we did this week in guns let's jump into it um well show notes haven't changed much and i'm still at the top of the list so i will begin because it's short and sweet um, I shot the sixth annual Ronnie de Group Memorial Steel Challenge. So, yeah, yeah oh, such a bittersweet match. Hmm. It's like, yay, Steel Challenge. Crap, Ronnie's been dead for seven years. So, a uh, little bit of uh, background, real quick. The Memorial Ronnie de Groot Steel Challenge was a match that uh, we started at the Rescue Gun Club in memory of Ronnie de Groot. Ronnie de Groot was a longtime member of the Rescue Gun Club and an Ipsic uh, section member there. Worked like a dog, just a fantastic human being. He did so much to help elevate that gun club to where it was. He ran a dairy farm and had access to all kinds of equipment. He was always constantly dragging it to the range to get things done. And um, Muffin and I were on our way to teach a black badge course in the Mary Machine when we got a call from uh, another Ipsic friend of ours, Harold, who was a very, very close friend of Ronnie's. They used to motorcycle together and snowmobile together and shoot together and drink together and do all kinds of manly things together. And um, Harold's like, boys, um, Ronnie and Carol just died in a car accident and you're uh, just probably just about ready to come up on the scene. So heads up. Mm -hmm. 
and it wasn't a couple of like we pulled over and just like what like just complete shock what do we do and then it was like pretty obvious we do it what uh ronnie wanted us to do or would have wanted us to do and that is carry on and be men and suck it up and go teach the black badge course because pulling out and those guys not getting their black badge isn't going to do anything except screw them over so we sucked it up and we went and touched the black badge and when we were there we just focused on the task and then we went home and we met up with the boys and dealt with what was going on and stuff um so a year so his memorial service was a couple of weeks later a week later whatever it was and um a year after we decided to have this memorial match and the first one we had we called it the Rocco with your Glocko, Ronnie yeah. the Group Memorial Steel Challenge. It was really hard to get on a on a on a t-shirt or a plaque. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> the reason why it was called the Rocco with your Glocko was because Ronnie the Group shot a Glock thirty five, and um, and so we, we I was kind of oh maybe we could make it a Glock Steel match, but that wasn't really realistic or practical. So anyway, the first year what we did was we. Um, we used the steel that we had because the gun club used to have a steel steel match every once in a while. But we, uh, after the first one, we invested $8,000 and bought a full set of USPSA steel challenge targets so that we could run an official, well, not an official, it was an outlaw USPSA steel challenge match, but it is the USPSA steel challenge Stages, smoke and hope, roundabout, outer mm-hmm. limits, uh, pendulum, speed option, all those, all those ones. They're very, very well known. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's been going on every year since. Now um, anybody who's been listening for the last little while knows that I stepped down as match director and vice president of the club and all that because of my studies. And so Muffin stepped up. He's running everything now as far as the club and he's in charge of the pistol section, which means he's our match director and the match director for the nationals next year when we host it. So he did a fantastic job. Not good. He had, a, yeah, he had a crew, an army show up. I don't know. Go figure. When I had to set it up, it was only me and other Trevor boat and he does it. Nine guys show up. You know what it Coincident? is? Coincident? Yeah. It's I'm an asshole. No one wants to work with me. Uh, no, I was just going to say <laughs> control. You need for control much. Uh, well, actually sometimes, when you have too many people, it's actually yeah. a hindrance because they get talking and being Tom foolish and things aren't getting done or they think they're helping and they do something by mistake and then I lose my mind and have to redo it. So I just like me and Trevor could do that thing in an afternoon and then, you know, Trevor can tolerate me really, really well. Mm, he's, so he deserves a medal. He does. He does. Well, they don't call him better Trevor for, for nothing, even though it's other Trevor, but whatever. I'm, I call him better Trevor. I know. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> you, you should be used to it. So so anyway, the match went off without a hitch. All the boys came up, yeah. and it was like normal life again. House was full of guys, um, Filthy and Price and Manderson. Um, was there anybody else? Gallon, did he go? Yeah, of course. But mm-hmm. he didn't. Uh, he didn't stay. He bailed. Oh. He had a thing. Oh, he's got a interesting gallon story no. that almost happened, no. but the way he tells it, it almost happening is still hilarious. Yeah. He's like, I'll give you a highlight. He goes, and then I went into full predator mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? What? Not with gallon story. So we're not going to actually... No, um, there was no gallon story, but that was Yeah, we're not almost. going there. Maybe... We're not. There's nowhere to go. Okay. You're actually taking longer than what if I would I'd be on to the next part, but... Trevor? You're telling me not to tell a gallon story is taking longer than me not telling the not gallon story that wasn't. Yes, Kelly. I love you. <laughs> I've missed you. <laughs> oh my God. Aren't you happy you came on tonight? Mostly. Yes. Okay. I was told you weren't going to be here, but I'm ha- I'm handling it. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to try and carry on and persevere anyway. You, you know, know what? I'm trying to spend time with the new guys, but here I you are can, just dominating the conversation like what? always. I can always anyway, leave. I can say go anyway and 16 chicken. times for me. Would you like Kyle and I to leave? No, shut up. (laughs) All right. So the match was um, awesome. Oh, Ginger Snaps was there. And uh, Dawn was there. And I hadn't seen them in forever. I mean, that was really the most important thing for me. I got to get that together with my friends, right? And we got to shooting the match was absolutely secondary. One, uh, we were at the Ronnie DeGroote shoot. So we got to, you know, tell Ronnie stories. And um, at the end of the match, we have a shot of... 40 Creek. And the reason why we have a shot of 40 Creek is because that was Ronnie's favorite drink. And mm-hmm. at his memorial service, as soon as Harold and I cracked a beer, because it was more party than memorial, right? You had to know Ronnie. Ronnie actually wrote a letter to be read at the time of his death. And it started like this. 
if you're reading this, that means I'm dead, and that sucks. Oh. If Carol's dead too, bury me on top of her because she always preferred me on top. <laughs> that was Ronnie to group. Like, just a man's man, a people person, <laughs> tremendous, tremendous guy, funny, big heart, hard worker. And so the day is all about remembering him and his wife, Carol, and everything they did for the community. When he died, he gave $20,000 to the gun club and $20,000 to the snowmobile club. When I die, if I have $20 in my wallet, I screwed up somewhere and forgot to spend it before I died. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's This man had his shit together that he could give away forty grand to his hobbies. Like, just a, mm. an amazing guy. So anyway, we have our shot of Forty Creek because as soon as Harold and I cracked a beer, his brothers went from behind the garage and pulled out two canoes filled with ice and liquor, and the party was on. Aww. Towards the end of the night, the last few people that were, you know, uh, in it for the long haul, uh, Ronnie's brother ga- gathered us together, gave us each a shot glass, and said, "You know, this is Ronnie's drink. We're going to have a shot of Forty Creek in uh, in in honor of my brother." And so we do that at the conclusion of the steel match, right before the award. So we tell a couple of Ronnie stories when we pour everybody a shot, and um, yeah, so it was just a the like it couldn't have went any better. Um, Everybody had a good time. We got a little bit of rain, but didn't matter. And then, of course, we came back to the house, and um, we didn't get too crazy because I was out the door at 6 o'clock the next morning. So uh, some of the guys were probably going to bed just an hour before I was getting up and leaving, but it is what it is. I you know, I had two things to do, so did the match and then left the next morning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so come in. I came in third behind two wannabe rifle shooters, right? And it looks like a rifle, but it shoots a pistol bullet. It's a ridiculous thing. A little <laughs> fancy red dot on there. Yeah. So anyway. How'd that go? I like who won? Uh, I think it was either Dawn or Ginger Snaps and then me. And uh, Gallon also had his rifle, but, you know, he sucks. So I beat him. So, yeah. And then um, tonight after the show, I'll be packing this thing up and all my kit and heading to Fredericton tomorrow after work. Um, there's a black badge match that uh, Justin is putting on our Ipsic uh, New Brother Train Coordinator, and it's at Filthy's mm-hmm. Club. Okay. So it'll be my f- second match, first Ipsic match of the year. How's so it feel to much. get back into shooting? Well, you know, Kelly, I think I talked to you about this. I didn't do any dry fire or nothing to prepare. I was just going to the match and Mm-hmm. Being competitive was the furthest thing from my imagination. I get on the I get on the line, I stand in the box, and the arrow says load make ready, and this bitch come out and it was loaded and hammered down in the holster. Like I just went into autopilot. Mm-hmm. It was the weirdest surreal feeling. It was like I was watching myself load the gun. All automatic muscle memory, like I had done it a hundred times a day before. It was a, so weird. Nice. You know, you've done something a lot when it's just like you don't even think about it. Gun comes out, mag in, rack, hammer down, polster. Yeah. I think if I had thought about it, I probably would have shot myself in the leg or something. So <laughs> it was good that I just well, went into that's, that's the Phoenix you're shooting, right? Pardon me? That's the Phoenix you're shooting, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Phoenix, Phoenix red back. And apparently. Was that your like, first match with it or you shot it last, or you shot it last season? I shot it. This would be my third season, I think, Mo. Oh, okay. I won the title. I won the provincial title with it last year, and I think I was second in Atlantic Canada. And then maybe I got it the year before. I think I maybe I started with it in the indoor season. Yeah, you did. In 2019, right? That makes sense, mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah, I switched yeah. from classic to this, shot it indoors, and then transitioned into the outdoor. Yep. On steel, I'm actually slower mm. with the red dot. On steel. On paper. Mm. You're faster. But yeah. on steel, yeah. I don't know if I'm trying too hard with the dot or the, the fiber optic. I just bing, bing, bing. Yeah. So mm. anyway, we were all slow. But I was uh, not as slow as everybody else. Like, I think uh, one of the comments from Jamie Knowles was my throwaway times last year were my good times this year. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I think I think everybody's a little slower because nobody's been going to matches. Well, that's it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, yeah. So, 
All right. Uh, that's enough from me. Kelly, what have you been up to? So before we actually get to me, why don't we talk about Brandon Jones here? Is there anyone looking to buy a new farm before C71 kicks in? If so, what are you considering? Why don't we talk about that when we get into What are we doing? We're just taking random yeah, this is messages oh, whenever yeah. we feel like it now. We're not yeah, even saving is- that for the... This is I don't like you. this. This is it's, it's a different show. It's a different it's show. Change, it's a different it's show. Change. Ten <laughs> episodes, and you guys are just gone. Fucking it, it embrace the future, Trevor. Right. Nope. So <laughs> why don't we talk about this when we talk about what we are? What's new in news? Because we're going to talk about C seventy one. Oh no! Updates. First, you want to bring it up. I, I complain. Now you want to delay. It's even gone and everything. Yeah. See, I, I remember. You made that. it go away. You have some kind of weird witchcraft power. You're controlling the internet. I do. Right before my eyes. <laughs> Anyways, but. I like this. I have the never mind. Eat you have eat. the power. Yeah, <laughs> like Shira. Where's your little I have the power? Shira. <laughs> Grace. Isn't that He Man? Yeah, she was Adam's cousin. Come on, man. I always thought they were like doing it. <laughs> they were relatives. I know. But okay, you had the dolls and you made them do it anyway, and the tiger watched. <laughs> Don't lie. We know. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So let's move on from that. Uh, so what did I do? Can we, know, can we really get past that? <laughs> yeah. So what we did in guns this week, I I just wanted to give a shout out to Travis Bader from Silvercore. He was on here a couple episodes ago and he sent. So he sent. Oh, look, Kelly hat. got another hat. What a surprise. A couple. Yeah, I think I'm up to 36 or 37 hats. I got to count them now. And he sent some patches and some. Why is it every time I hear the number 36, I want to follow it with C or D? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, what else did I do? Oh, uh, I don't think you can see this. Can you see this? Oh, I can Look. see it. It looks like a 180. It is uh, a 180. So I got this in the mail. It was awesome. I got. Who's I had a go- WK 180. Is that? Uh, I got a really good deal from somebody that we know. He goes by Ad. Really? Frosty. Frosty. So, whitest man in Canada. Yeah. So he was selling his WK180, and I said, "Talk to me after the show." Because here's the deal. Okay, I'm uh, I'm going to be taking a lot of people to the range now that the ranges are open because a lot of people have contacted me, and well, our ARs are no longer allowed to go to the range. So I said, "Well, I do want people to be able to shoot some black guns and some T23." So, you know what? I'm going to buy that. So we bought it and he sent it to me and he gets a gold star rating, five star rating because he sent it literally almost overnight. And Question. What? Did the package come covered in stickers that say for rectal use only? Because that's what he always sends my <laughs> packages. No, he likes me. So it did not. <laughs> or he doesn't like you. And that's why you didn't get special stickers on your package. Oh, oh. oh you know what? That's true. No, right? he did. Yeah. No, he did send me. Maybe a bunch if of he packs. liked you, it'd be rectal only. Rectal for the ones he loves, yeah. Right? <laughs> now, I, now I feel like he doesn't like it. Well, did I say that? How do you even get stickers that say for rectal use only? How is that a thing you On can buy? On the internet. Oh, right, the internet. Yeah. I'm sure, if you ask the pharmacist, they just hand them over. That's true. I'm going to try that. <laughs> I'm going to try that. Next time I'm in for my happy pills, I'll be like, do you have any rectal only stickers? Sir, <laughs> sir, we've asked you not to come in here anymore without your pants on, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but no, I didn't get any special stickers on it. Now I feel like I should order something from him. So he can send me. Stuff. He's going to send you a sandwich, and oh. on the sandwich, it's going to be rectal only. You, you know what did happen, though? He sent me a bunch of stickers and a bunch of patches, and I gave them away all last week. So I need more. So, Adriel, if you're listening, send me more stickers and patches, and then you can put on rectal use only on the outside. Okay. Anyways, I did skeet night with Kelly. I did not go last night, but I went the night. I haven't been on two weeks, but I went uh, last week on Wednesday. And uh, my I was, it was much better than the week before. Uh, still not as good as our first week back, but it was it was actually pretty good. Enjoyed it. Got to chat a little bit as well. So went to SFRC. I picked up some 6.5 Creedmoor because I have a new gun coming. And when that comes, I will show it to you all. But show I me just, your man bun. <laughs> I don't know. Can you see it? Anyways, it's not bad, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty one. Pretty good one. <laughs> I yeah, so I will show it when I get when it gets here, but I'm super excited about 
Um, I think I'm getting it this weekend. Anyways, I had a Maple Seed instructor boot camp and also an event at Warren Fields. So the instructor boot camp was held. There was an ORPS match on Saturday. And then right afterwards, we had the instructor boot camp. Just wanted to say that it was a lot of fun. We also had pizza in a wood burning oven, first time ever that we had it at an instructor boot camp. And I think everybody who is an instructor for Maple Seed now wants fire, wood fire pizza. I think now they look like McCain mini pizzas. I yeah. was really just, was really... they were good. <laughs> It was really good, actually. Uh, okay, so the other thing is we had an event on the Sunday as a follow-up. It was stinking hot, like 35 degrees, and there was sun. There was no tornadoes, hurricanes, or anything like that. So I was thankful for that because last 35, time we, 35 yeah, but, is gross, so. Yeah, last time we were at Warren Fields, we had actual tornadoes touchdown. So it was a much better, much better event. And, uh, yeah, we patched eight riflemen, and we had four of our instructors requalify as well. So it was a good weekend. One of the people that qualified as a rifleman, she's uh, 14 years old, and she's been shooting with Maple Seed since she was nine years old. She actually shot the ORPS match, CRPS. She's a sponsored shooter. She always shoots a lot of adults. So Her first time out? No, this is her fourth time as, at a Maple Seed she first okay. one she came to was when she was nine years old. Wow, um, good for yeah. her. That's so awesome. she is, she sought a um, Great Birch Solutions uh, the Fusion with the Fusion stock. It was awesome. Like hmm. she can she can out she out shoot out shot a lot of the adults there this weekend too. So it's awesome. The uh, on Monday night. We had the QCIF uh, Ladies Committee do the podcast takeover, the QCIF podcast takeover. So we were on that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, we uh, it was just fun to do that. I also uh, got a package in the mail from Tueva. Oh. Uh, I don't suppose you have the package. You just put the things on. I'm curious to see what it was postmarked because, my God, I sent that so long ago. So I have the new groups. Well, they're not. Do they're new groups to me. And, and did they get the job done? Is it what you needed? That's exactly what I needed. Oh, so the, the grips that were on there before were, I don't know if they're ceramic or whatever they are. Um, but they're I don't like ceramic, them. No, they're like a, almost like a 1950s Bakelite plastic. Yeah. Mm. Awful. Mm. So I don't really, I didn't really like them, but the plot or the. Rubber. This, the rubber. The rubber. The rubber. And they're fat. They, I never got them. I bought this gun as well from, from Adriel, and he didn't send me the original. He's such a dick. I don't know how you put no, up with him. I know. I know. <laughs> Anyways, he did not send the original rubber grips, but I like the rubber grips because I can just now, squeeze them. Did the them. gun come with a sticker that said for rectal use only? I'm asking for a friend. No, he didn't. <laughs> and now I'm now I'm thinking he doesn't like me at all, but he gave me really good <laughs> discounts or deals on all the it's guns. almost like I'm planting seeds of doubt in your mind here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how that makes you feel. Yeah, shut up, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. So the last thing is I'm going to be doing steel match on Sunday. I got set up for that. I got squatted with all my peeps. So I, <laughs> they squatted us for one o'clock in the afternoon because they no, knew what, well. what kind of steel match? Rifle, pistol? What kind of discipline? Like, is it USPCA? Like, we sh USPSA? Or is it just whatever? What is it? I have no idea. It's going to be pistol. Pistol steel be, match. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to be indoors. Mm. So one o'clock at FRPC, which is my local club. So I'm super excited about it. Oh, sure. yeah. What? I'm just asking because if you knew what the course of fire would be ahead of time, mm -hmm. there's um, there's actually stage plans for shooting steel stages like the Smoke and Hope and the pendulum and all that stuff you can go online mm -hmm. you can go on youtube and i'm not just telling you this anybody who's listening and interested in learning how to shoot steel matches if they are the uspsa steel challenge matches that i keep rambling off smoke and hope pendulum speed option there's videos that show you the correct order or the fastest order in which to shoot them okay thanks but no i have no idea you have no idea uh, nope. you're just gonna i'm just gonna wing it participate so, Chris Titchler, you just wanted to say that she was 13 years old. So yes. Amazing. She's supposed to be 14. Anyways, she's 14 and weak, so I said put her on the line. It's a Texas star match. Kelly's listening. So ooh, ooh. There's nice. a pattern for that, too. Yep. So, there. 
Hi, Cal. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Anyways. <gasps> okay. So why don't we get on over to me? She's Mo. better, Kelly, by the way. Oh, shut up. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know what? What? She she is a better Kelly than... All right. Anything else? No, I said... Other Kelly? Mo. No? All right. Mo? <laughs> Mo better? Uh, Mo money? Um, on Mo Friday older? morning, I drove to Peterborough, Ontario for... On purpose? You went there yes. like on purpose? Yes. Oh, um, there because they're lost. For a match that wasn't official, an official match because the organization that starts with I and ends with C wasn't sanctioning it because of the COVID restrictions. So we called it a training day. It was a practice. It was, yes, a, it was eight, an eight, practice. Uh, eight stages of practice. And uh, I was part of the build crew. And that's the first time I have done had done that. So that was a great experience. Minus the fact that it rained for most of it from spitting to downpour but but it was still good a lot of a lot of great guys and um the match itself i'm <laughs> i'm still struggling i well i shouldn't say i am still struggling i'm good i'm done with uh struggle the lock for <laughs> for the next couple of matches i'm going to go back to the shadow too so i didn't have any issues with it before so that's what i'm going to do everyone has like people are nice so they have to be clear you're blaming the gun What's that? To be clear, for everyone who's listening, you are blaming the gun. Well, I'm not. That's how it sounds, but go ahead. Blaming. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah, it's, hear I'm me not out. saying that um, there were jams and. and uh, Stop it. Jam is for fucking sandwiches. There were stoppages. Were they failure to feed, failure to extract, failure there to there eject? What were they? And then, and then I don't know why, but. For some reason, the mag's always coming loose. So I don't know if it's how I position my hands on recoil. And it's something I never experienced with the Shadow 2. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's because I'm flustered. What's going on is you're gripping the gun incorrectly and depressing yeah, the magazine coming. release. Yeah. That's... You hitting, are you hitting the mag release? No, they're just magically falling under the gun. <laughs> <laughs> he's using the force. Of course okay, he's so... <laughs> Trevor. Kelly. <laughs> Can we talk? You've had your turn. It's Mo and I now. Mo. I'll go back yeah, and pick so, on you if okay. you like. But Mo, so I, can, I can give you a little backstory. But when I started, when I first started, I had done some IDPA and I was using a Walther PPQ M2, like the, the polymer one. And I guess I was doing the same so thing. So many with transition that one, so. jokes. I can't even. What's that? <laughs> Carry on. I'm tr- okay. No, go ahead. I don't know what it is about polymer guns, but I guess I. Don't grip them well, and and then I end up uh, like touching the mag button. So, do you have a gun? Do you have a gun with you right now? Is there uh, a gun nearby? I can go get one. <laughs> Look, I went to get one. <laughs> well, I have to leave the area, but anyway, so I don't I don't do that with the shadow two. So I'm just going to go back to the shadow two, and and that's the end of it. So uh, I've already started dry firing with, with it all this week, and I've been at it. So that's that. I'm not gonna fuss with. A, I'm not gonna fuss with a with with the with the other the other gun. So right. Okay. So all 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 shit talk aside for a second, Mo. Yes. The the um, way in which you hold the gun was most likely the the issue with the Glock. Okay. Um. You've had your black badge, yes or no? I can't remember. Yeah, I did it last November. All yeah. right. And there's a section in the manual about how to properly grip a gun. Was it covered in detail and demonstrated? I've done, I've looked at lots of videos on, and I, no, 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 that's not what I asked. I asked if they covered it in detail and demonstrated it. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So was anybody coming down the line and looking at your grip and saying it's good or it's, or correct it? I'm going to say no. (laughs) You'd remember if it was me or McClatchy. (laughs) But okay. Let me tell you a little anecdote. There was a guy who joined um, our club and he bought an STI edge and right. he wanted a backup gun. So he bought a SVI, which was an early SVI, which was identical to his edge. And that's because the guys who started SVI were former STI guys. So it was a two piece gun, 2011, right? Steel top, plastic bottom. So he gets his SVI. And he uses his STI mags in it. And every time he shoots, the mag falls out of the gun. He's perplexed and orders $700 worth of magazines without checking or asking anyone. Okay? What he has is money, not experience. 
but he's surrounded with guys who have experience. He didn't ask anybody. So I go to the range and he's trying his um, SVI and he's very disappointed and frustrated because the magazines that he just bought, the SVI magazines for the SVI gun are falling out as well. So I took one look at both pistols and I told him to shoot the SVI with one hand. And lo and behold, magically, the magazine stayed in the gun. Do you know what the problem was? That's right. The support ham was depressing the extended magazine release, which was on the SVI, but not on the STI. So his grip was wrong on both guns, but it only affected the SVI because of the extension. So your grip may still need some improvement, but it because the ergonomics of the uh, shadow are different than the Glock, it's not causing you to drop the magazine release or depress the magazine release on the shadow. So you got to get your grip looked at by someone experienced because this problem could haunt you across multiple platforms is the moral of the story that I'm trying to get at. I, but I wasn't doing it with the shadow too. That's the, so. That's right. But you were with the Glock and you might with some yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so then you just got to make sure you never touch another gun except for shadow two, as long as you live yes. or have your grip. Oh, okay. All right. That's easier than that. <laughs> okay. Well, let's do that. That's, that's fine. One trick pony. Yeah. Cool. All right, more about no, the, I, uh, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. So see, I'll Kelly, work on it. I'll work on it. See what, what he's doing, Kelly. He's listening. Oh, you said what? I fell for it. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. What your shirt, what's your shirt say today? <laughs> it says Kelly's the best. I love her. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So I covered the part that I'm going back to the shadow too. I have a match and a match in Quebec this coming Saturday, and there's actually a couple in a row. So I'll be shooting with the shadow too going forward, and hopefully not uh, depressing the mag button when I grip. And um, that's really that. That's it. I just reloaded some ammo for the match, and uh, that's really oh. it for me. I didn't do too much. If Did Alex you... is there, ask him to join you at the safety table and just say, hey, man, can you take my grip for a second? See how he actually, my... yeah, he messaged me. He's going to be there this Saturday. So and he's nice. going to be shooting uh, He's going to be shooting the alien. So I'm curious to, to watch that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would be curious to see that, too. That thing you is should, a, a you beast. You should videotape it. He, t he told me he's going to have rust. And I said something like I would take his rust. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelly, I don't think there's video allowed at Quebec matches. Oh, yeah. The no. Quebec CFOs. Oh no, no, they're yeah, they're they're strict about that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, cool. But yeah, Trevor had a good idea. Get him to check your grip. Mm. Cool. Anything else, uh, Mo? No, that's it for me. All right. Cool. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Fire away. Didn't get a whole lot in. Still busy with work, but I did shoot a three gun match on the weekend. Sweet. And like everyone, there's some rust and cobwebs fallen off but i was still able to make, take a division win not a boy and i know trevor's gonna be curious and i took third overall behind two pcc shooters uh, you got screwed yeah match was very much designed for pcc Go for figure. the option yeah right. the options that were out there because yeah the guys who beat me was a 15 year old kid that i've been training for the last few years well, the good news and... is though like when the match is over you could probably take him in a fight in the parking lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the md <laughs> yeah well you so... know what it's the 15 year old kid that you've been training for years and that if he can overtake you that means that you've been doing a good job yeah it's your fault and that's our, yeah. that's oh, our, that's our yeah. goals in life is his yeah. name anakin or ren no <laughs> all right you'll, you'll be okay you'll be okay yeah, so and he's Pat, putting in lots of time. Yeah, That's Patrick good. wants yeah. to know if those are the if it's the ones run by Kyle. I don't know what that means. Are you running? Yeah. Are you I, running? Who's the MD? Gun? Oh, that was uh, Steve. That was the three gun match was up in Peace River. Okay. I haven't run a match in since wow. 2019. So yeah, well, your range well, has been closed. -ish. Yeah, our rifle ranges, our outdoor ranges have been closed. Um, still thinking of doing like. Last year, I put on an action shotgun match, like Ipsic style mm -hmm. shotgun, mm -hmm. and still thinking of doing that because that's as far as action shooting, that's our option at my local range. Mm. So, Ipsic Canada as a discipline should explode, mm. or as an yeah. organization, rather. Yeah. Um, 
Did did Adriel join you? I remember he was saying that he no. might actually. No. Okay. No, he didn't make the trip up. Uh, you know, there was uh, Jennifer and Justin, her husband, who made the trip up from Edmonton, mm-hmm. camped out at the range, and they seemed to have a good time. Definitely a little different match than what they do down in Edmonton. Hmm. But, but yeah. still good. Yeah. Awesome. What um, what do you see in the at three gun now for uh, center fire rifles? WKs, Semi. WKs, w- yeah, yeah, a lot of WKs, uh, MCRs. Up here, that's basically what you're seeing uh, the odd Tavor, or I think I even seen a couple Keltec bull pops out there. That's too bad. Yeah, that, I'm no government no. could have had those. I'd be like, yeah, have them. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'd start digging yeah. them up from. Yeah. Well, no, one I, big I, thing, especially for competition shooting, that really sucks. You can't chamber check them. You have to put in the chamber flag to ensure that you have an empty chamber. Like the Tavor, you, you can at least look in and see that you got yeah. an empty chamber. The Keltex, you can't. No, there's nothing there's nothing that makes any sense about it. Shells trickling out the front. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Okay, cool. Anything else, Kyle? Uh no, like the rust. I'm a little bummed because it's not really stuff I can work on dry fire. I slide fire comfortable behind the trigger. Mm. So Transitions actually hitting the target. Yeah, so, but in order to hit the target, you got to implement the fundamentals. Remember what Alex said last week or the week before, whenever that was. Even the best in the world, when they train, what do they train? Yeah. Not the stuff that everybody thinks yeah. is super important and super crazy. They train the basics yeah. and the fundamentals. Oh, for sure. I'm not stopping dry fire. In fact, wrap it up. But it's just those weren't my major issues during the match. Okay, so but, just feeling good about yourself and like loving yourself and wondering why you made all those bad choices <laughs> loving yourself <laughs> yeah. no i was actually especially all things considered i was actually satisfied with my reloads and stuff so that's good nice. is that the one area you really want to concentrate on is the reloads uh well i mean yeah reloads you can lose a lot of time especially reloading a shotgun you can uh, lose, lose yeah. a lot of time and I don't think I fumbled a single shotgun load all day, so I was pretty happy. <laughs> I good. miss my Tavor. Not my Tavor, my Typhoon. Uh, <sighs> Remember when we lo- could reload shotguns with a mag? Mm. Quad load like a man. <laughs> <laughs> reload a <laughs> fucking semi automatic magazine fed with 10 rounds in it like a man. <laughs> quad load like a man. Look at his hands. His hands weren't designed for quad loading anything. Nor, nor were these. Like, these <laughs> hands are not that big. Quad loading was 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 fine until we realized that we could put a pump action magazine into a semi-automatic shotgun. All right, yeah. upcoming events <laughs> brought to us by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma that the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. You can learn more about Telos Alpha at telosalpha.com. The IDPA Ontario Provincial Championships will be held on July 24th. Uh, registration is through practice score. IDPA is where you go when you're a washed up IPSC shooter. So if your IPSC career is done and you want to shoot IDPA in Ontario, go to practice score. Oh. Canadian, yeah. what? Yeah. Mo, Whatever. question, concern about IDPA? You used to shoot IDPA, didn't you? It was fun. And then you transitioned into IPSC. So. No, but I would still do IDPA. It was fun. It's On different. Purpose? Yeah. Did you wear one of those fishing vests with the little wed, lead? Yeah, I bought a nice. I bought a nice one too. That's awesome. My so, concealment. Yeah. I don't. Were you uh, into listening to podcasts when the gun dudes were a thing? No. no. So they were all IDPA guys. It was the largest, most popular, one of the longest running program podcasts going, and we basically ripped them off completely when we started uh, Slam Fire. And uh, anyway, I, I went to uh, Utah. I don't know. Maybe you heard I open carried in Utah once. It's a thing. And, oh um, and it's like beating a dead horse. <laughs> Any chance to bring it up, Kelly? Anyway, my uh, the guy who was picking me up was one of the gun dudes. And it wasn't hard to spot him on the crowd. He's the only guy in the airport wearing a IDP vest. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, Canadian National Steel Challenge is returning to the BTSA. And for those of you that don't know, that's in Alberta. Correct. Uh, the, what is it? Something, something shooting association. 
Anybody well, know, Kyle? Buff, BTSA? Buffalo, Buffalo target, target shooting. Target shooting yeah. yeah. They also held yeah. the Canadian Nationals for IPSC, which is the sub- sport that's superior to IDPA a couple of years back. <laughs> um, registration. <laughs> so the match is going to take place August 28th to 29th. Registration will be up on practice score and opens on July 1st. So thank you, Dan B, for sending that in. So they do the USPSA style, if I remember correctly. The... Um, Steel National Steel Challenge that goes on at BTSA. So someday I'll make it out to that. News. All right. We have a C-71 update in the news. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair had a press conference. Regulations to implement some measures within C-71 back from 2019. Lifetime background checks and discretionary ATTs to take full effect July 7th, 2021. What's a discretionary ATT, dare I ask? Uh, I don't even think they have an answer for it. I don't it. think they do. Yeah. Okay. This is something that was pushed through so that they could, the house is rising. So they wanted all these measures in place, but there's more that are going to be taking place in September yeah. when they resume, they, you know, resume seating again. In the house. Okay. And yeah. they're say- helping. What? Yes, I feel safer already. <laughs> helping. Speaking of feeling safe, public safety. Mm -hmm. To hold public consultations. Yeah, right. That's a joke. To try and implement other measures. In other words, we're going to pretend to give the public a say while we find new ways to fuck you over. No word on work to combat actual crime. No, because it's no. Of course not. No, of course not. No. No. And uh, these other two things have no context and were probably put in by Adriel, so I'll save them for. No, they were put in by me, but they're. Oh, no, sorry, so, Kelly. Do you want so to talk about is, those? Okay. So, one of. Uh, there's a YouTube video that I'll post on the Facebook page. It is with respect to Bill Blair and the announcement with C71. And then also, there is. It's just a. Um, it is the gun bill C. It was more for C seventy one. You so really, I'll, you really helped to clear all yeah. of that up. God. I'm glad I gave you the opportunity. <laughs> I, I will post this. both of them. On Kelly, would you like to explain? I do it, but YouTube. I'll post it next. Trevor. left. Just teaching the new guys. Okay, thanks. Examples of what not to do. Clear and concise. All right. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Kelly? No. No, I'm you done. Should. That was clear and concise. <laughs> <He's> done. <laughs> <laughs> Move on for a lot. I kill you. New gun stuff. And that's sponsored by Bolt Action Coffee. <laughs> Truly some of the best coffee you can get. Slamfire Radio is now a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. It's roasted in small batches and it's quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to boltactioncoffee.com. We have a discount code for you because. Unlike Adriel, who couldn't be bothered to show up tonight, we love you. And that code is SLAM FIRE. I don't know if it's case sensitive, but we have it written in all caps. It so is if all it, caps. All right. It's it's case, so it's case sensitive. So mm-hmm. if you don't put it in all caps and it doesn't work, don't yell at me. Yell at Kelly. Yeah. All right. Just to nope. let you know that they just posted that they're going to, they're accepting orders right now uh, for this week. And then they're going to be sending it out. So if you want fresh, fresh, fresh coffee, get it in now. Nice. Well, I mean, it does say it's made in small batches, so don't mm-hmm. think when you place your order, you're getting something that's been in a warehouse for eight months. Love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I didn't. I didn't update the new gun stuff. So okay, so that's last week. So we'll skip that. I don't know. Did you guys talk about it last week? I wasn't on. Half. Oh, Mo Beta. Were you talking about the BCI? I think that might be new. I don't remember talking about that. Yeah. And, and Bullseye has some screaming deals on uh, 3M Pelter Tactical Sport, which I need a new pair. So, Rick, I'm going to be calling. There you go. So, BCL MRX Bison review this reviews coming are coming out. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to hear about that gun, those reviews are coming out. Where? I don't know. By who? I don't know. But they're coming out. There's reviews. They're coming. I think they um, Yeah. I think and then, yes. this, anyways, if you want some 3M, 3M Peltors, which are the poor man's, um, what are the MSAs? Yeah, they're the poor man's yeah. MSAs, the hobo version of the MSAs with the motor boating. They're not pads. really, they're not really hobo. They, they're a little, they're pretty good. 
compared Especially, to the MSA, they're hobo. Yeah, but they're the best you can money. buy if you don't want to buy MSA. How's that? Right, you're going to save 150 bucks, which makes you a hobo. Listen, I uh, can work when I put the gel the cups on them, hobo. I can wear them for 16 hours without getting a headache. Whereas, yeah, Anyways, I don't want to spend $450 for them. No one does. I know it's ridiculous. Anyways, Craig, Craig hobo. says, unless an election is called, ramrodding as much as they can right now. No kidding, they're trying to get everything you know, put yeah. through before they leave their. Yeah, C10, C10, 1 30 in the morning, yeah. no debate. Yeah. Yeah. No debate. Oh, yeah. Greasy. Yeah. So greasy. We have to see what. That's how they do it. What was the one they tabled? The, oh, they tabled the one where it was okay to choke somebody and kill a baby uh, Easter weekend one time. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Where they started to, oh, these crimes are the punishment for ch- killing a child is way too severe. Let's, uh, let's table some legislation to make it less of a crime. Oh, and gun smuggling. They made gun smuggling less of a crime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, want, well, my, but they is, want my it, air. It is keeping me employed, just saying. Yeah, but so is pedophilia <laughs> and rapists. Oh. Yeah, that was our two. So. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Main topic. <laughs> so, 410, yeah. gauge or caliber? What is it? Can you explain this to me? All right. <laughs> I'd love to mansplain this to you. So, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, look, I'll talk slow. I'll get okay. all my crayons and... <laughs> Bless your little heart. <laughs> when I'm done, you'll understand what a gauge is versus and why the, the four and versus no, just why why four ten is not a gauge. Okay. So first of all, if you look at a box of four ten ammunition, there is a decimal point before the four ten. Mm-hmm. There is no decimal point before twelve gauge, sixteen gauge, ten gauge. That's the first very minutia point that I'll get into while I drag this out to think of the next minutia thing I'd like to mansplain to you. Um, okay, so okay. I have a question for you. Then why... I think you can hold your questions until the end. No. So we might, we might as well talk about it as they come up. Fine. Go ahead. What's your question, Kelly? Okay, so why the difference? Why the difference between 410 and 12 or 16 or 20 or 28? Why do they go with caliber versus a, a gauge? Okay. I was literally question. trying to do that. But as per your standard operating procedure, you couldn't wait for me to ask the question. You had to interrupt. <laughs> Ergo, dragging it out longer than necessary, and I get blamed for taking too long. Ergo. <laughs> so why? Why did I put up with it for 400 episodes <laughs> is the question. Okay. So let's first figure out where what a gauge is. Okay. There's actually... Um, there's a dude, Simon Whistler, Simon Whistler or Simon. Yeah. Simon Whistler. He's uh, got a really cool YouTube channel. Yes, Mel. Was it? I just said whisk. Oh, I thought you were looking to jump in there. Um, anyway, he actually has a video on what is a gauge. So when it comes to shotguns and I, anyone who took the fire and Canadian firearms program course should know, should know what a gauge is. So a gauge is, the amount of balls of that size of lead it would take to equal a pound. Correct. So a 20 gauge would be 20 balls that add up to a pound. And that the size of that ball is the bore of that gauge shotgun. Okay. So a 28 gauge, 28 balls, the size of that bore equal a pound. 12 gauge, 12 one lead ball, the size of that, there are 12 of those lead balls, the size of that bore equal a pound. That's where gauge comes from. And I'm sure every listener listening probably already knows that. So if you were to take um, one, uh, so a 410, it's just not, it's not a thing. It's a caliber, not a gauge. Because if you took a lead ball that was, the diameter of the bore of a 410 shotgun, 410 of them would not equal a pound. And that's why 410 is not a gauge, it's a caliber. Because 410 of those balls of that size would not weigh a pound. Correct. Anyone want to correct me on that? No, you're correct. No. Well, All except right. for the decimal 410, you're actually less than one. Right. 
Yeah, because it's behind the decimal point. So, yeah. yeah, math and stuff and place value. So, so okay. So, um, what else do we want to say about four ten? So, okay, Matthew's so, favorite shotgun. Okay, so why is it? Why is it Matthew's favorite? Like a lot of people will buy a four ten for smaller stature and stature, like women or children. Whereas also. 20 28 gauge most not a lot will get the 28 gauge because the it's so expensive that's just yeah that's just because of price point otherwise right. like 28 gauge is wonderful gauge for small game mm -hmm. so why would somebody want to get a 410 versus a 12 or a 16 or well i think it's a lot of it has to do with the, the initial points that you made typically the firearms are smaller and lighter mm-hmm the ammunition, of course, certainly has far less recoil than all of the other shotgun chamberings. Mm -hmm. um, it's not inexpensive compared to it's less expensive than tw than um, twenty eight gauge, but it's not like buying twenty two ammunition, and it's t not terribly popular anymore. So you don't necessarily see a lot of it around. I've got here a Winchester Super X in seven and a half. I don't know what we what would you shoot a. a a dove with that a rat in your basement like that's that's pretty small mm -hmm. and i've got um yeah it's gonna be i've got one here that's probably older than mo but not as old as you thanks it's um imperial 410 cardboard hull slug that'd be cool okay, um, so if it's a slug what are you going to what would we be using it for groundhogs somebody would whack Rabbits. a deer with this a deer Okay. Yeah, somebody would. I don't know if they should, but many a bird hunter carry these in their pocket in case they see a deer. Okay. Probably in locations where they're not supposed to be shooting deer um, and don't want to crack off a 30 out 6 So a 410 slug doesn't sound a lot different from a 410 bird shot, right? But Bambi gets whacked. But um, also, there are handguns chambered in 410. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So... There's the little um, Derringer looking thing, the Snake Slayer, I think it's called. Yeah. And then, of course, the Judge. That's a ridiculous abortion of a gun. So, yeah. Um, you guys have any 410s? No, I don't. Kyle, have you ever owned a 410? I've never owned a 410. Really? Kelly? No. No. no I have a 12 and I have a 28. That's it. Huh. I had um, two. Kui 410s when I had my Kui collection going last year. And um, one was really nice. I got it from Joey at the DC Armory that I worked at. And it was really nice shape. Um, oh. I had two of them. I never fired them. They both got sold before I even fired them. I have fired 410s before and 410 handguns, actually, for that matter. But um, I've never owned one. It would be the weight and size preference. It's getting that 410 is more expensive to shoot than 12 gauge around here. Yeah, I believe that because yep. the reason why 12 gauge is and always will be the cheapest is because it's military and law enforced used. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's readily available. Yeah, mass Just produced. Mass produced. Yeah. And after that, the shooting, the clay shooting sports, right? So, mm -hmm. but 410 has its place and it's never ever going to go away because it mm -hmm. is a great shotgun chambering for kids especially mm -hmm. and you know at the right distance with uh correct shot placement it'll take grouse and hares and rabbits all day long yeah i was just actually oh. looking it up a little bit and they're saying that it's people a lot of people use it for coyotes as well so yeah i could see mm. that mm. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. with so, a slug maybe or well no slug yeah. but yeah. what i'd like to know is so if you're making a recommendation for 410 or 20 which would you for 20. a small 20? It's going to be a little more, ammo's going to be a little bit more readily available. Yes. Shall yes. Them, and, yeah. and the velocity of a 20 and a 12 is virtually identical. The only difference is the amount of payload. Yeah. The shot, the amount of shot will be less, but you can get all the same size shot. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I still have my um, 20 gauge from my youth, the Kale single shot 20 gauge. Denny restored it for me, I think, even when you my dad was still it? alive. Yeah, I still have it. Yeah. And then I have a pump action. 
It says it says Weatherby, but it's not. It's it's well, it's whatever. It's a Turkish pump action. It's very nice finish on it, especially the wood. It says Weatherby, but it also says Made in Turkey. But regardless, I love hunting um, with that. I've taken a fair number of both varmints and game animals with it. Nice trigger, nice looking gun. I like twenty gauge. I like twenty gauge a lot. Mm. What about twenty eight gauge? You like it? I do. Um, I I didn't own any until I had two Kuis. It is the most expensive Kui because it's the rarest of the Kuis. And um, both were in the 300 to $350 range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you tell somebody you paid 350 for a Kui, unless they're a wannabe Kui collector like I was at the time, they kind of scratched their head. But mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so better Kelly says that 20H is still better. Better than 20. 20? Better than 20 gauge? Mm-hmm. She shoots 28. I shoot a 28. Yeah. See, I've heard it where because like Trevor was talking about the uh, 20 gauge and the payloads being very similar with the same velocities with the tighter bore that some of them can actually recoil harder than a 12 gauge. And so for like smaller frame person or someone getting into it, 20 yeah. is a better one that is just that much easier on them. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't didn't notice that with my wife's 20 gauge. I remember when I first bought that, I screwed around one hand at that, and it seemed it's like it was a lot less than my 12 gauge, but that <laughs> it's a little shorter. Yeah, a little shorter as well. Yeah. So my 28 yeah. gauge. Um my 28 gauge has no recoil whatsoever on it. Yeah, I have um a Bacale 12 gauge and a Bacale 20 gauge. And the 20 gauge is is a physically smaller firearm and lighter. And therefore, as Kyle said, because the cartridges are so similar that um, you may actually, the perceived recoil of the 20 may be worse. Mm -hmm. So, Mo, what's your shotgun experience like? I only have 12s and I haven't shot them that much at all. So... Uh, I haven't really hunted with them, so I haven't done any. I mean, I want to do that stuff. I just haven't had a chance to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, duck and the rest of it. But mm. so, yeah, just 12 so far. Cool. I don't have that many. Well, it's so accessible. It's the most common, both for platform and firearm or uh, ammunition, rather. Yeah. Easiest to reload for components or you can even get shot makers if you want to turn wheel weights into lead shot. Right. If you're just, you know, yeah. don't care about the quality necessarily of the ammunition, if you're just plinking or doing competition, whatever. So cool. All right. Well, that was pretty short and sweet. Unless you guys got anything else to add about the 410 or other shotgun ish things. Are there, are there many uh, new manufacturers for the 410? Like, I don't really even know. Like, who's the big names that, that, that are making them? Mossberg is most certainly probably still making one. Um, the Mossberg 500 probably comes in 410 and then 20 and 20, uh, 20 and 12 gauge for sure. Um, a probably lot of the, most of the majors are still yeah. making them. And all those um, single shot guns coming out of Turkey, Mo, uh, uh, they change name every other week. I'm sure they yeah, still, <laughs> yeah. There's also uh, either Denis had one or can get them. I can't remember. Denis at DC Armory. It, it's... Um, Basically, it has a revolving cylinder. It's a shotgun with a revolving cylinder. That well, I've seen that, yeah. 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 Ridiculous, but it's a thing. <laughs> I want it just because it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, there was a lot of interesting, ugly women in school I didn't want to date. Like, just because something <laughs> is interesting doesn't mean you want to get with it. So. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I asked. They said no. Let's let's not kid ourselves here. So, <laughs> all right. Um, listener feedback. Yep. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, park rising, Cerakote finishes, as well as wood and steel refinishing. Who puts steel refinishing? Obviously, that, that's new. Somebody stuck steel refinishing in there. If he does hot bluing and parkerizing, that is steel refinishing. Okay. Do you gone listen? 10 minutes. Do you My listen God. to the show? 
Uh, very rarely. No, not okay. since the best host left. I just, just like. Okay. Well, we occasionally add things to it just to. Well, don't add things that make it clunky and dumb. You know what? Welcome back. <laughs> back again. All right. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more, where he can also refinish the steel of your gun at DC gunsmith.ca you can also follow him on all the social medias he's on the facebook's and he's on the instagrams okay emails i'll take the first one because it looks long enough to give to kelly kelly first one for you from chris k who says hello radio team i was wondering are you are you slam fire with a question mark i don't know what that means i mean have any of you ever had a slam fire if so are you oh, slam fire radio Okay. Interesting. Um, well, it just happened to me first time ever. So with or without your permission, I awarded myself the Slam Fire badge and certificate. <laughs> and it goes on to say, bite me. This is Chris K, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have to say that it was interesting. Much louder than the usual sound, ton of smoke coming out of the action area. Difficult to say if it was a faulty round or a problem with the bolt. After removing the case, checking the barrel, and quick visual inspection of the bolt in the chamber, I was able to continue shooting. I'd uh, probably blame the bolt because I had constant malfunctions, failure to eject uh, double feeds. Can I just uh, jump in there, Kelly, for one sure. second? Okay. It's my understanding that a slam fire is an out-of-chamber detonation. And it's almost certainly caused by a protruding firing pin. Does anyone here on the panel have a different operating no. definition of a slam fire? Mm -mm. <clears throat> I would say not necessarily out of battery, but when you close the bolt, it fires. Yes, it doesn't have to happen on a battery, but mm -hmm. the firing yeah. pin is hitting the is hitting the yeah. primer before you intended it to by depressing the yeah. trigger. Very yeah. common in uh, poorly maintained or uncosmoline cleaned SKSs. Mm. Uncosmoline. Mm. Oh, All right, Kelly, you want to keep going? Okay. I was not able to go through the uh, single 10 round magazine without a failure. I'm not naming any brands because I haven't had the same problem with that rifle before. Sent it in, sent it in to the manufacturer got great service and support and got the rifle back as fixed. Unfortunately, I was not able to shoot it slash verify it due to range closures. I hope that I will fix it because when it shoots, it was very accurate, semi-22. Always wear safety glasses. I found two very small and super sharp chunks of metal from the uh, case that could hurt your eyes pretty bad. And he did include some pictures, but I didn't post them in here. So anyways, um, we'll... We'll post it, but he it, the pictures were casings with the back ripped off of them. So, yeah, you guys always wear glasses and be careful. Yeah, so yeah. I'm glad that he didn't injure himself, Chris. And thanks for writing in. So. Yeah, he, you know, you don't want to remember to have your safety glasses after the accident. You just, mm -hmm. I'm not shooting a competition, like anything, even, even your regular eyeglasses yeah. could save your eye. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, the next. Sorry, Kelly. Yeah. I thought. You, no, sorry, I was go just going to say. So he's had. He was having issues with it all day and 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 that. So I'm glad that he was able to send it into the manufacturer and got some service. That was pretty good. And let's see what happens when he gets a chance to shoot it afterwards. Speaking of trying to avoid accidents by wearing safety glasses, if you're having constant malfunctions, maybe it's best to just put Change it away. Rifle. Yeah. Put it away. Yeah. Put it away in case it's warning signs of a bigger problem that's about to occur if it doesn't want to work right there could be something bigger coming down the pipe so just pack mm -hmm. it up and either send it away take it to a gunsmith clean it do something guns are supposed to work mm -hmm. and if it's malfunction after malfunction that's you're getting a warning sign mm -hmm. pay attention to what's happening and what it's telling you and, and heed those warnings your oil light on your car comes on you don't keep driving hoping that it's going to go off right if your gun is malfunctioning <laughs> oh, you should probably maybe Pack it up for the day. Yeah. No. All right. It says good, good, good day, Adriel, Kelly, Kyle, and Mo. Welcome to the new guys. It's been nice to have a few new voices and personalities to the show. Though everybody seems too nice. I wonder who is going to have a go button moment first. 
<laughs> they took too long, so I came back and smashed it. <laughs> demonstrate for the new guys what it's like. Yeah. I have recently and unexpectedly received an email notifying me that a new member of the family is on its way and I need to start getting prepared for before its arrival. Hmm. I hope like I love how they're referring to the potential birth of a of a family member as it. <laughs> Uh, not sure about the new guys, but I know that at least Adriel and Kelly are parents and was hoping that you might be able to provide some nuggets of wisdom. Wear protection. <laughs> I was wondering, well, I'm not a parent and that's my nugget of wisdom. I was wondering if there are any brands of food that I should avoid. What, 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 do, what are we doing here? Are we talking so about just read it and then we'll talk about, about it. What types of foods are best? Oh, Jesus, I'm stupid. I'm so stupid. <laughs> Oh, I've been off the air too long. I was yeah. wondering if there are any brands of food that I should avoid. What types of food are best? Good prices for food in this current world economy. Recommendations for cleaning tips, products, safety tips, products, and what the first outing should be. Thank you so much for the nuggets you can provide, Stephen, from the center of the universe. So do you know what? He, you know <laughs> yeah, what? He's, get, he's obviously getting a new gun. Yeah. So, <laughs> nine, so he's getting a nine mil. Nice. So he's just asking brands, best pricing. By the way, we talked about it. Brands and best pricing or whatever you can find and afford mm -hmm. to buy at the time you find it. Prices are going down, though. Good. Yeah. Finally. Scary for a while. So. so, yeah. Or is, you know, just start reloading. You're, if you're, going, you're having kids now. It's going to get expensive. You got to feed these little hurting. bastards. You yeah. really yeah. do. They're yeah. hungry. So, yeah, they're <laughs> hungry, but they're not picky most of the time. So buy whatever you can, whenever you can, because food's hard to come by. So you're from the center of the universe. There's some places that are near you. FOC. Gene uh, and Bull Finch. <laughs> Don't, put Gene and Finch. <laughs> Don't put it. Anyways. Well, that's uh, where you go to eat the food. Yes. Not buy the food. My bad. Right, correct. FOC, a bullseye north. They have some really good deals usually on. So check them out. And if you want to reload, reload. I think, yeah, reload. Trevor would talk to you about uh, all day. Yeah. What do you got? Six fifty. Uh, my six fifty is gone um, oh. because I wasn't going to really? reload progressive rifle anymore. Hmm. So I'm on to the square deal, a hundred percent, and I'm mm -hmm. only doing nine mil. Um, all the other calibers are gone. I just got my two, my Glock, which I love and can shoot and never drop a meg, mm -hmm. and my Ipsic pistol. I think he missed that, eh? Yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. no, no, I got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> your hands are shaped. I leaned in and everything. Yeah, no, it's not the shape of my hands, it's how I use my hands, right, Kelly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I got it. Okay, yeah. good. All right. What are we even talking about? We were um, talking about I don't know anymore. ML <laughs> reloading. We were talking about Dylan your Square oh, Deal. Yeah. Square Deal D for the win. Um, okay. Excellent progressive press if you're only ever going to do pistol. Mm -hmm. Proprietary dies, but it doesn't matter. They're inexpensive. And if it's all you own, you don't need dies that work in other machines. So, yeah. Jack Wells, where are you getting them from? Campbell? Uh Yeah, absolutely. Mm. There's a Campro dealer in Halifax. There's one in uh, New Brunswick here. Mm -hmm. And they're a good, uh, well, I call them a Canadian company, but they are from Quebec. So, you know, they're Canadian mm -hmm. until they finally separate. Mo, are you going to move over here when, when that comes? or I'm going to go to Alberta. Atta boy. You know what my plan is? <laughs> Land of the free. Next, when, when we finally get a, a, a prime minister who's not a Quebecer in Ottawa and he decides Quebec... Um, uh, transfer payment scam is over, and we cut we cut them off of Alberta's welfare, and then they start bitching about, oh, we're gonna separate. I'm gonna be fuck yeah. I'm gonna move over there. I'm gonna vote for separation. Then I'm moving back <laughs> to, to Alberta. Should take you're gonna week. get me killed this Saturday. You know that. Pardon me. Said so you're gonna get me killed this Saturday. I don't know, but you're a separatist. You'll be fine. <laughs> so, if you would like to uh, email Slamfire Radio, Radio and pick on the separatists, you can do so by sending your email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. <laughs> Patreonies, we have a new one, Scott N. He's in for 650, like the Dylan. Thank nice. you, Scott. Good man. Patreon, Patreon supporters should receive a patch in the mail. If you have not received yours in a month, that means Adriel is slacking and you can email us and yell at him. 
If you would like to become a Patreoni, part of a very niche, distinct group of individuals, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash slamfire radio. Shout outs. Kelly, you have a schwack here. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Chris Titchler and Warren Fields for host us, hosting us for our instructor boot camp as well as Project Maple Seed. Give a huge shout out to all the IITs for that came and did they did a super job first event of the year and they were like their points of instruction were like bang on and everybody was safe and everybody had a really really good time so thank you to them and travis from silver core for the awesome swag it is officially my new hat that uh, my most favorite new hat you're a hat whore and you'll wear it until the next floozy sends you a hat and then you'd be like oh this is my new hat it's true (laughs) yeah see this hat see how old it is and the way i'm not a hat whore I stay well, loyal to my hats. Whatever. And I also wanted to say <laughs> And I paid you. for it. And I also wanted and I also wanted to say thank you to Trevor for the grips. I love you. Thank oh, you. On, it took 18 months for them to arrive. Man, I'm glad you got them, but that was a little ridiculous. I was actually second guessing whether when you said you didn't have them yet, I was second guessing whether or not they actually got mailed. Mm, yeah, so. they got they came here. Perfect. I'm glad you have them. Mo, you're you. next, buddy. You got any uh, shout outs? Uh, my shout outs are to all the groups you offended tonight. So this is going to take a while. Uh, <laughs> first one is the IDPA guys. It is fun to <laughs> get out there and shoot those matches. Uh, to the province it's not the though. celebrating a holiday today. So, uh, Bon St. John. Mm. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, today's a holiday. Day as today? Well, so. Yeah, today's a holiday. So, am I getting paid time and a half for this episode, or is it just regular? Yeah, you get paid time and a half for Quebec, but you get nothing because Quebec already gets everything from Alberta. So, thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Did I say that right? (laughs) You did. Absolutely perfect. It's the only thing you got right on light. Was there anyone else you offended? Did I miss anybody? Mm. Kelly. Uh, uh, quite a bit actually. Oh, I, and I met Kelly last week. That was awesome. So she yeah. bought me a coffee at A and W. We had a good time, right? Yeah, you're supposed to tell them uh, I bought you a sandwich. We weren't hungry. Either. Oh, and so oh, she bought me the the works. Like it's uh, too late. It's too late. French fries. No, uh, it's, the ship has sailed. You had one chance, man. <laughs> and you know what I would have said? I met Kelly, and she made me a sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, at the, yeah no at the side of the highway. <laughs> yeah, even better, barefoot too. I would have showed up in a motorhome just to tell her to get in the kitchen to make me a sandwich. Oh dear! All right. Are you, are you done? Is anybody else's ass you'd like to kiss before I move on to Kyle, or are you no, all good? You're Go good? ahead, Kyle. It's all yours. All right. Uh, wow, send this man a transfer payment. Would you? He's already taken everything. So right. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Steve-O, the MD for Saturday, and all the ROs for volunteering their time, and everyone else who was there the night before setting up stages and whatnot. So it was a good match, fun. So thank you all. Awesome. Uh, I have a couple as well. Um, one to you two guys. I'm sorry, I really am, but you're doing a good job. Keep it up. I'm glad you're here, honestly. And that's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> the other shout out is actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to no. cry about that. That's like the most feelings you've ever experienced ever on here. I know. I'm going to, I'm going to go pour some liquor on them and push that shit back down. Down, down feeling. <laughs> this next one's all in the feels. It'll touch you right in the feels. Oh, dear. To everyone who emailed me after I left the show to share like their favorite for latte meltdown and go button moment or that one time I made fun of Kelly um they were going to miss me and all that all that stuff there was um quite an outpouring of support by like at least three people and uh it means a lot to <laughs> <laughs> it was an outpouring <laughs> we had a support group we met on thursdays after okay yeah 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 no it was awesome no no, no. there there were there were some people that reached out and said they were going to miss me and all that stuff and it was very uh anytime somebody takes the time out of their busy lives because let's face it we're all busy we all have stuff yeah. to do we're um we're all overworked underpaid and underappreciated so anytime someone takes a minute or two to actually send me an email to say some kind sincere words it i, I gotta tell you it absolutely means a lot to me it does not go unnoticed and, and really thank you guys for taking the time to send those kind thoughts and words and uh, and i really sincerely appreciate it um 
uh, gone off the air, but still very much a part of the Slime Fire family, working in the background to harass everybody as much as I can and be a pain in there, all their butts. Um, and uh, gone, but not forgotten. I'll never be too, too far away. And as the um, course load lightens up and stuff, hopefully I'll be back on more. The last class was twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it made made coming back on even just for like a, hey, get caught up kind of show really, really challenging. This next class, I think, though, is Monday, Wednesday. So as matches go on and stuff and I've got things to come on and rant to complain about and just frankly miss picking on people, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully find time to come hang out and get picked yeah. on too. <laughs> It's two-way street. Yeah. Except for you, Mo. You don't get to pick on me. <laughs> That's fair. It's like we have, uh, it, I just have to say, we have like doppelgangers here. I, I'm looking at Mo. I'm looking at Trevor. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, I should grow a goatee and half an eye. I mean, you should grow a goatee, don't you? Have a girl to make yeah. sure that. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that enough? We yeah. good? Yeah, I All don't right. think I can take any more. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Show me on the doll where the bad man hurt you. <laughs> All right. Check us out on Gun Owners of Canada. Likes on Facebook. We are up to or down to. I don't know if we're up or down because I haven't done this for like 10 episodes. 2,791. Did you hear that, Kyle? I did, yeah. Okay, good. Pay, take note. <laughs> give us a review on facebook please join this is the most important thing absolutely join the canadian coalition for firearms rights they are the number one advocacy advocacy group in canada working tireless tirelessly to try and help keep your property and I keep don't to laugh, your remember lives. how you were making fun of me because i couldn't talk tonight <laughs> when it's not important Kelly, when it's not important, you need to know how to time your sheep shots. You interrupted a very important segment. Did you say cheap or sheep? Was I talking about the vaccinated? No, then I didn't say sheep. There's another group I, <laughs> I insulted, Mo. Vaccinated. So I got to go. I got to do another shout out. True story. The boys show up at my house the night before the match, and I'm like, here's how your sleeping arrangements work. Those of you that have not been vaccinated, you can go into the house. Those of you that have been vaccinated, you go sleep in the barn with the rest of the sheep. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you next week. And Kelly? Yes. Good night. Aw. <laughs> Good night, Kelly. <laughs> Good night.